If you've been following my channel, you know that I've been doing book reviews for a while now. I think I'm on review number seven or eight, I can't remember for sure, but I have a couple of books here that I was going to review, but they ended up becoming rejects. They ended up becoming novels that, for one reason or another, they just didn't grip me and I decided not to continue. And these are the ones that I tried to read after um, the Philip K. Dick book, which was, uh, what was it? It was uh, We Can Build You. And these are two that I that I picked up and ended up putting back down. And I thought it would be interesting to make sort of a sort of a special feature for the book reviews, showing you a couple of books that I wanted to read, but I decided not to for one reason or another. And so I'm going to show these to you right now and kind of explain what happened. This one is called Quest for Fire. And as you see, it says, The future began 80,000 years ago, the novel that inspired the most astonishing film of our time. Which, I found that line kind of funny because the most astonishing film of our time you would think it would be a better known film if that were the case. I'd never really heard of this film. You would think that it would be on, you know, a lot of lists and stuff, but it, it's, um, I think that it was a film that was kind of, uh, a bit forgotten. Um, and this, uh, this book was, uh, became a movie and the movie was starring, uh, Ron Perlman, who, when I, the, when I first heard that, I thought, wow, that's some good casting because Ron Perlman has a very Neanderthal kind of type face you know he looks he looks like like a caveman and i thought wow that's that's great they they the makeup people i bet saved a lot of money when they hired him uh, or when they cast him but the only thing i really wanted to say about this two things the first thing is the reason i didn't continue reading it was because i it occurred to me that there's not a lot of dialogue in the book because it's about cave persons and they don't really have much of a spoken language so a lot of it is just kind of um narrated uh and and it's just not that interesting and i thought to myself you know there's a movie and sometimes it's worth reading the book instead of watching the movie but in this case considering how unengaging the book is because of the lack of dialogue and because of the narrative uh style i thought you know it really makes a lot more sense just to just to watch the movie if i'm gonna take in this story so but uh, another thing i was going to talk about in the review was this line here about how the future began 80,000 years ago. I was going to talk about how I actually uh, subscribe to uh, uh, sort of the Graham Hancock uh, notion of history. The, the Graham Hancock is an amateur anthropologist who has a theory that I can't prove that it's true, but it makes an awful lot of sense to me. Uh, the theory that uh, there have actually been many advanced civilizations uh, throughout the 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 millennia that humans have been well we know that humans have, in their current form have been around for maybe a hundred thousand years and uh that you know the, the idea that in, in all of that time and in a hundred thousand years of history that it took almost almost it took like ninety thousand years to uh create the first you know kind of regional civilizations you know like egypt uh, Greco-Roman, uh, the, the Chinese empire, you know, those, those, you know, really, uh, powerful, almost global civilizations, uh, to, uh, to, uh, the fact that it took that long for those to form kind of doesn't make sense. And then the fact that it took about 10,000 years for, uh, for our global civilization, our advanced global civilization to come about after those early kind of Mesopotamia and those early civilizations, the fact that it took, you know, I mean, I can buy that it took 10,000 years to get to where we are now, but to, to think that it took a hundred thousand years to me doesn't make sense. I think that it takes typically about 10,000 years for humans to go from basically being cave people to being an advanced global civilization. And I think that there's a cycle that that's about every 10,000 years where we build up to an advanced civilization and then something happens and we either destroy ourselves one way or another or a natural disaster forms or, or uh, occurs. And that leads to uh, the, the, that civilization being lost. So uh, I really do believe in that. And that was what I was going to talk about. Um, well, one of the points I was going to make, and obviously I was going to talk about the book too, but 
I was going to talk about how I actually kind of disagree with the uh, with the premise of, of this book, uh, if, if that it occurred eighty thousand years ago, and I think there are actually like saurians. Uh, I think in the book in the novel they actually mention saurians, which I'm guessing implies dinosaurs, which you know. Yeah, I don't necessarily believe that humans and dinosaurs coexisted. So it's definitely a, it's definitely a fantasy. But I was going to just use this book as a way to sort of talk about Graham Hancock and about uh, advanced ancient civilizations, which is different from aliens. The, the the whole ancient aliens thing. I don't believe in that. I don't think aliens had anything to do with it. But I do think that we there have been several advanced human civilizations. The most recent one, besides our own, being one that was. Uh, Right around 12,500 BC, it was destroyed, probably by a comet, uh, based on the uh, what I've seen of Graham Hancock's stuff. He makes a compelling case. But anyway, so that's uh, Quest for Fire. And then on the right here, we have Be Not Angry, which is pretty straightforward. The story of a young priest torn between his vocation and his love for a woman. And I was fascinated by the premise of this story. And I was going to talk about how, I mean, this takes, this story takes place in the early sixties and the divorce rate was much lower back then because the boomers hadn't ran it way up. So, uh, this priest falls in love with this woman and the odds of it actually, like the, the marriage actually succeeding are fairly high compared to present day marriage statistics. So this guy finds love. The odds are he actually, you know, it's real and he, and you know, they're going to, get married and, and stay together. I was going to talk about the risks that one takes when they sacrifice uh, their career for love or their, or their love for a career, basically the trade-offs and how life is a series of trade-offs. You kind of have to sort of roll with the punches and kind of ha get the most of everything. Like there's like this kind of, um, I would like in, in the case of this priest, uh, what he could do is he could uh, quit the priesthood, uh, he quit the clergy and become a Lutheran priest, which is what I've heard a lot of Catholic priests do when they do end up falling in love and getting married. They become, become a Lutheran minister, which is, let's say about maybe you get like 75% of the experience for about, um, you know, uh, yeah, 75% or so of the experience of being a priest, but then you also get the added benefit of being able to get married and potentially have children and lead like a normal human life. So you kind of, you have to give up a little bit of the experience of being a priest, but you, you get a lot in return. So, so there's that. And the reason I didn't finish with this one is because the writing style of this guy, this William Mickelfelder, uh, I just, I was not down with, I just, something about his writing style was very, inaccessible and when you read his um the about the author section he's not really a novelist so much as he is like a a, a magazine writer so it actually makes sense that uh, that he's not that uh, he's not that good at writing novels so i just didn't want to try to um navigate his uh, his kind of verbose and kind of uh inaccessible writing so uh so that leaves you, uh, yeah, so these are the, the, the two books that I decided not to uh, continue on with. Uh, these are not reviews, obviously, because I didn't continue on with them, but I thought it'd be cool to make an, uh, a video just kind of showing you these books and kind of explaining why I didn't read them and what some of what I might have said, uh, some of the uh, tangents I might have gone on if I had. So anyway, thanks for watching and subscribe to Captain